Hi Ankit, uh, welcome to our platform and uh, thank you for taking out the time. Uh, congrats from our end, uh, you have made it to I am Ahmedabad and also converted other uh, top colleges. Thanks a lot Ajay, it's a pleasure to be here and sharing my experience with you. Thanks, thanks Ankit. Uh, so how is it, uh, how are you feeling now Ankit? Relax? <laughs> I can't say relax, it's like uh, as we know it's just the beginning of a new yeah. journey for us but i'd say i'm very happy excited nervous there's a mix of all the feelings and yeah that feeling has started to sink in now like talking with seniors understanding what actually i am Ahmedabad is so yeah it's started to sink in now and now i feel that yeah i finally converted <laughs> Ahmedabad and i'll be joining <laughs> Nice, nice. So, uh, Ankit, uh, please uh, take us through your journey. Where have you, uh, I mean, where did you do your schooling, your undergrad and all those things? Uh, so, it's it's a very long journey. I was born in Kanpur and then I did my schooling in five different cities, uh, moving across different states as well. And finally, I ended up in Aurangabad, uh, where I did my, uh, for, like, I appeared for all my boards there, 10th and 12th. And then I moved to Pune for my undergrad studies. Uh, I am currently in my final year. I'll be graduating in June 2020, like this month only. Uh, I'm doing my computer engineering from Vishwakarma Institute of Technology in Pune. And I thought of giving CAT when I was in my second year only. So it was pretty much clear to me that CAT, like MBA is the way. And why CAT? Because I just wanted to do it from India, knowing that other like, there's nothing better than I am ABC if in India at least and going abroad then it would uh, ask for a lot of other things. So I was very clear that it's going, I have to target ABC and so CAT it was. So I started preparing in around November 2008 when I joined Time Institute. So I wasn't really serious to be honest for the first five, six months uh, when the classes were going on. I was just relaxed and since the classes were going on, there was an understanding of how CAT is. So I just went through the modules that the uh, institute gave us and it was just a couple of mocks that I gave to understand uh, what I am VCAT and what I can ace easily. So it was in late July, I would say, when I actually uh, started my serious preparations, my self-study. And after those, like after that, the four months, it was rigorous studies. I except that it was rigorous preparation, studying for around eight, nine hours a day, giving mocks, analyzing them for hours. It was pretty rigorous. And there were times when I would even think that, is it really worth spending so many hours a day studying all night? And would you able, like, would you be actually able to get a good percentile convert and all? But then that's uh, something that every cat aspirant will go through. And that's definitely worth experiencing because that's how every day you learn new things, understand how to manage your time, understand more about yourself, your abilities. And that's how you slowly and slowly like develop yourself. So that's, uh, that's an exciting journey to go through, I'd say. And it's amazing to, like more than amazing, it's fortunate enough that you'd be able to crack it in your first attempt, get the dream college in your first attempt. Because I have heard about experiences who have like people who have give appeared for cat for four or five years and they're still like uh, struggling and going after what they want so that's pretty much uh, like i appreciate the determination but if you get it in your first attempt then you feel satisfied content and uh, you cannot be more fortunate i'd say because there's also a luck element attached to it so it's really good that you get it in your first go so it's a very happy feeling right now that I did not have to struggle a lot and it came through in the first go. So, Akit, uh, you were saying that, uh, I mean, uh, while you were in your second year of your engineering, uh, the thought of MBA came into your mind. So, what yeah. triggered that? I mean, uh, were you having seniors from your college or were there people from your family who did MBA from uh, base schools in India? So, how did that uh, thought of going for MBA start in your second year? So, there was nothing of that kind. Uh, everyone around me was an engineer from my family, from my college, like even in my uh, closest friend groups, everyone wanted to do an MS or get a job and get things done. So why it came to me was basically I had an interest in finance, which I like, I still have an interest in finance and I always wanted to pursue finance and then move to financial markets, investment banking and various stuff. 
So I wanted to explore that domain. But how did that start being an engineer? How did that inclination towards uh, so it finance wasn't, start? Uh, uh, it was even before my engineering. Uh, okay, I say okay. from my 10th grade. I, mm-hmm. It just started. I don't know how it started. Actually, I don't know the starting point. But my brother used to sometimes invest in stock market. And I would okay. just sit along and watch, uh, see what he would do. And then I read a couple of books related to management, related to finance. Then I started my own uh, reading. I would just Google things like whenever I felt like or wanted to understand would do some courses online just for fun to understand how these things work and all. And then it started. And then in second year, uh, along with a friend of mine, I started a a forum, like an investment forum in our college. So that helped me learn a lot. That helped me explore more like different domains, different markets and other financial instruments. So that was when I thought that, like, why not give MBA a very serious go and go after it that could be my calling so i'll still say i don't know what exactly i want to do with my life but then i'm just trying to do what like i'm just trying to go with the flow and uh, do what my calling is go after it so i can't uh, come like give you a very clear statement that yeah this was uh, it and this was my trigger point it just went on gradually and i still feel the same about uh, it so let's see how these two years shape my mind about the finance thing. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Ankit, I think you started, uh, though you started your preparation back in uh, November 2018, I think you seriously started taking the mocks and the classes, right? I mean, uh, started working on seriously from July 2019. Yeah. So how did, uh, I mean, how did from July 2019 till the time you gave CAT, how was it, How I mean, how many mocks you were giving or because uh, giving mocks uh, also takes a hit on the confidence because uh, sometimes you score less, sometimes you score well, sometimes you score very badly in certain sections. So how did that? Uh, how did that go? And what kind of uh, things that you did to overcome these uh, uh, high and I mean these these low situations while you are giving cat, uh, I mean cat mocks. Uh, so I'd say by the time I had uh, like I gave mocks in uh, July, I knew VARC was my weakest point because. It was hardly that I could cross the 85 percentile uh, mark or for that matter, I was in the range of 25 to 35 marks if you talk about absolute marks. So it was very rare uh, for me to cross 40 and I would be glad like finally it's 40. So I knew uh, that was something I lacked and I had to prepare a lot in VARC. So what I did was I understood that RCs are not something that I would like. So I started reading a few articles every day uh, because I hate reading a lot. So it was very difficult to do that. But then <laughs> there was always a thing at the back of my mind that if you have to crack that, then you have to crack this section as well. So I just did it for get scoring some marks in VARC. I just tried to motivate myself and read a couple of articles at least daily and solve around three, four RCs every day and would then analyze them. And when you're talking about low scores, so I have experienced that, uh, like it was during the last phase of my preparation. Uh, I remember it was August last week, October last week, sorry, uh, just around 20, 25 days before CAT. And around September, October, the range of my mocks was 160 to 185. That was usually the range I scored in. But in that particular mock, I don't know if it was difficult or what, I scored just 120. So it was a... Uh, it was a very big hit because the least I scored was in DILR, which was my strength. And I would usually score around 65, 70 easily in DILR. And I scored around 25 in that mock. So it was a very big hit. And knowing that CAT is just 25 days far from you, it really get, gets you in that negative zone. I did not do anything that day. I just stayed as it is, like went through that feeling. But then next day, I realized that even if uh, I scored 120, I am at least not scoring a zero. I can improve from 120 to whatever I can in 20, 25 days. So I started practicing more. Uh, in the next one or two weeks, I remember, I don't remember, but around 60, 70 sets, I might, might must have stalled, minimum for sure. And then I gained confidence. So it's basically that practice your weak areas practice more on your weak areas and like don't forget your strengths stay in link with them and things will work out because at the end we know how much we have prepared and what we actually 
uh, can like how much we can achieve so if we keep that faith in ourselves i believe it's not really difficult because after 120 the next mock i gave it was direct 170 plus so that is possible and you can end up scoring bad you can have a bad day or a good day so it's not about uh, being demotivated or being very happy about your mock scores because at the end uh, they are not your cat score so just take it as it is like i never scored i just scored once uh, above 200 so but i always wanted to get a score which was uh, above 200 in final cat so that didn't demotivate me that i couldn't ever get it in mock so i would not even be able to do it in cat and eventually i uh, made a 200 plus so that is possible like don't give up on yourself and the biggest take away for me was that the person who couldn't even score 85 percentile in most of his mocks in varc got a 97 in varc in the cat which and which is to be like said that this was one of the most difficult varcs we have ever faced so it's just about your mindset i'd say just stay calm during your preparation whatever mocks you give whatever highs and lows you go through just stay calm stay at the same level don't get too excited or too de- demotivated just keep your goal in mind that there's a the d day for which you're preparing and keep going with the flow uh, so ankit uh, i mean uh, how were you analyzing your mocks were you rigorously an- analyzing your mocks because that actually helps you understand where you are uh, wasting the time on certain questions or uh are you not picking the right uh, questions to solve so how was that uh, strategy from your uh, side how were you doing it uh so basically when we analyze the mocks uh, there were uh, different strategies which i used for all the section for varc it was uh, i would go through the rc again and understand how many questions i did right and check the time entire time the say it is 8 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever and then understand whether this rc was actually the first one to be picked or this was to be left uh, to the last so how that helps is what i understood analyzing my uh, rcs was i was not good at inference questions because whenever they asked about inference i would get it wrong or i would spend too much time on this so i had an excel sheet made where i would just jot down uh, for every topic say in uh, for rcs it's inference maybe it is critical reasoning or whatever direct questions i would just write down how many right or how many wrong i got in that particular mock and then that helped me keep a track so i would understand so this is how i came to a conclusion that my inference questions weren't good so this way i did it for all the sections for dilr i would solve all the sets after the mock as well if i couldn't attempt or if i got them wrong so that helped me understand uh, which topics i am good at so for example i was very good at uh, questions which were related to selections and distributions or something like that so i never uh, tried to miss those questions even in my mocks so uh, that excel helped excel sheet helped me a lot because whenever i would jot down i had a track record that how i was doing in that per- in a particular topic and i would uh, just take a look at that excel before setting for a mock or one day before the mock so uh that would be just a confidence booster or maybe an understanding of where you stand so this is like i agree to this that the mock analysis takes a lot of time but it is worth it because mm, that is the actual thing actual preparation is the mock analysis true true very well said ankit uh, so ankit uh, i mean you're given your cat and then uh, there is really little time bef- i mean after the cat results are out and then the interviews happen so yeah. how did you start preparing for your awt or wats and pi uh i did not actually prepare uh, as significantly as uh, they considered to be uh, for me it was very simple i knew that being an engineer and being a fresher the focus would be either on academics or the question that why do you want to do a mba straight after engineering so all that i had made my mind was let's be clear with these two things and know yourself that what you are planning to say there is well justified so i had backup like i had made backup points to support my argument and as far as awt was considered i gave a few mock pis at uh, time institute only so uh, before the pis they would have awts so i gave around four mock pis and i wrote four awts that was it for awts for me i didn't even like i didn't not uh, say focus a lot on awts because i have been writing since around 5 6 years and i'm used to uh, like writing i know like the topics in awts or the vats are 
quite different but then i am used to forming a flow or a, you can say a flow of the sentences while writing so i rather than speaking i prefer writing so i knew that awt won't really uh, make a huge difference like practicing or not practicing i was confident enough that i would be able to write on the spot and as far as the pi's were there uh, i got my reviews from the pi boards that i uh, took mocks with and i understood like what's the way to go through so i would just uh, uh, rehearse two or three sentences uh, every time like just roaming around i would rehearse a couple of sentences and that was the way it went for me other than that i just read some current affairs uh, and this is true that uh, abc usually doesn't focus a lot on uh, current affairs and which i had confirmed from my seniors as well so i did not focus much on that because my target colleges were those but if you're targeting other colleges then you should know like what is the most important factor that they focus on pis and for abc it was mostly acads and for b it was your sop so i had written my sop very deep like i had tried to write every detailed thing every minute thing in a detailed manner and i was thorough with every word that i had written in my sop and that's what happened at b they talked about everything written in my sop so that's the way your interviews would go for b it would be sop based for a it might be slightly acads or something like that but then uh, what is most important is to know yourself at the end the whole interview revolves around how much do you know about yourself and that's pretty much uh, that you can define your interview i think uh, i mean knowing the reason why you actually want to do mba and then introspecting about what are the choices right. that you made in your life uh, why certain things you did uh, the way you did and all those things would make your uh, personal interviews easy so yeah. ankit uh, you were in your final year of your uh, undergraduate and then you were parallelly preparing for cat so was it difficult for you or uh, since it was the final year since you might be having less subjects sometimes so how was it was it easy or difficult to uh, balance both the things mm. it wasn't really hard because i was interning at that moment of time so my interns like i worked with a startup and the project i had was quite comfortable like i was comfortable with the project so it didn't really affect me a lot because uh, i i could manage my time between them but yeah it gets stressful at times because then uh, because you have to manage a couple of things but then uh, like when you are up going for any post graduate exam say cat gre gmat whatever you go for uh, you might be must be doing something simultaneously with it so and management is like as we speak of management exams it's about time management so that's your first step where you learn your time management uh, in the initial few months it was difficult but then i made a schedule which i stick to so once the schedule was made it was possible to stick to the schedule and then focus on what's going on uh so i can i mean uh the cat preparation or the wtpa preparation i mean like we already discussed we go through the highs and lows so yeah. uh what kind of support you had from your friends or the mentors that you had maybe be your seniors or some family yeah. members so what kind of support was there and how did how did that support from your family friends and mentors help you in uh, achieving the success that you were able to achieve now Uh, so like there are different experiences like when i was in uh, i had joined time as i said so while we say that uh, engineers are really good at quant uh, i did not consider that to be a case for me because i really messed up at times <laughs> so it was uh, i think around august or september that i really realized this and it was high time that i had to talk to my teachers so i had a conversation with my quant teacher he helped me understand where i was wrong pick me like motivate me enough that there's still time and then you can get back so this was the uh, this was one changing moment for me because after that my cat uh, con scores never decreased because i actually followed what he said and the scores improved and other than that uh, since no friend of mine was preparing along with me it was quite, quite difficult because i had to be alone uh, like no one to discuss the questions no one to discuss your doubts and clarify them uh, but then it was also there that there were no distractions for me because i stayed at home i stayed with my parents at that uh, for those few months so it was very comfortable because staying with parents is always a wonderful thing and then you are at your own ease and your parents make sure that you are comfortable uh, given whatever is going on around true, true. so 
and uh, whenever i felt low or something i would just talk to my mom simply it about any random thing except cat <laughs> so that <laughs> my mind is diverted and then these light conversations really do uh, like really help you while preparing so i think my family like i say that my family had supported me a lot because every time i scored high low what like whatever i was preparing so they were always good enough and they were always that uh, like uh, there was always a environment that fine you're preparing just prepare as it's a general exam don't overstress and this is not going to define your life it was very normal around me so i never felt that pressure as such <laughs> nice i mean uh, well said ankit uh, your i mean uh, the support that we receive from our family is uh, what actually helps us uh, yeah. do what we do uh, so ankit uh, i mean a lot of uh, aspirants right now would be in the same situation as uh, you were last year so what i mean do you want to share something else you already shared some pretty good advices about the mock preparation or your pa preparation or do you want to share uh, any other things which would help these candidates uh, give a better cat and further uh, uh, do well in their vat in pis uh, sure so one thing is that given the covid situation we know that like it's a very bad situation to be in but then you are at your home so as i said your families are the best support system that you could have while preparing so utilize it to the best of your like to your benefit as much as you can prepare very sincerely because if you're sure that cat 20 is uh, cat 2020 is the goal dedicate enough time understand your mistakes uh, rectify them and move forward do not get motivated because i remember reading articles of the 100 percentilers 99.9 percentilers amdavat converts watching their videos and always imagining that yeah maybe some day i'll be interviewed or maybe some day i'll be writing an article guiding you and today i am doing that because i kept myself motivated throughout the journey and yeah definitely these things helped me a lot like today maybe you're listening to me so all i'd say was one year back i was the same as you are and today it's slightly different because maybe i was uh, dedicated for those 4 5 months or while the preparation or i was very sure about my goal and if i could come from that phase to this phase of my life then it's possible for anyone to come and i have always write like uh, whenever i've written my articles even on any for any on any platform for that matter i had said this one state one quote which i'd share here as well uh, that there's only one difference between a 99 percent tiler and a non 99 percent tiler and the difference is that a 99 percent tiler knows he's going to get a 99 while a non 99 percent tiler just wants to get a 99 so understand the difference believe in yourself and it's possible like what you think you can achieve that's it from my side yeah i mean uh, very well said ankit i think uh, you shared some pretty good insights uh, thank you for taking out the time ankit and uh, all the best to you you hope you are going to have a great time at time i am the bar thanks a lot ajay i hope to and it was wonderful uh, having a conversation with you and i hope our conversation helps a lot of people out there De- definitely ankit uh, thanks a lot ankit